Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's um, Discover What's Next session on fashion. Um, we have a really exciting evening planned. Um, my name is Paris and I work in the student recruitment team at RMIT and I'm also a current student and I'll be your MC this evening. Um, we also have Teresa and Christy um, as our Q&A moderators this evening. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to pop them in there um, and we will answer them at the end. And we also have um, Michael behind the scenes producing tonight's session as well. So before we get started, um, we I would firstly just like to um, acknowledge the um, traditional owners of the land in which RMIT University stands. And we would also like to recognize our elders past, present and emerging and say a big woman, Jekka, welcome to you all tonight from wherever you are watching. Um, but without further ado, um, we will get into the exciting stuff. And I would like to um, introduce Elizabeth Gao. Um, and she is our um, Bachelor of Fashion um, graduate student, and she will be tonight um, taking you through her journey um, and her experience at RMIT. So welcome, Elizabeth. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Elizabeth, and I am a 2019 graduate of the Bachelor's in Fashion Design course. So today um, I will be sharing my student journey. Um, and give you an overview of the fashion and textile courses RMIT has to offer. Okay. So as I go throughout the slides, you'll see imagery from our students. Um, this shoot was conducted by our third year student, um, Danielle Herbert, who is studying a Bachelor of Fashion Design honours course. Fashion shoots are part of the assessments. Okay, so why fashion at RMIT? RMIT School of Fashion and Textiles is ranked in the top 11 of the Business of Fashion's Best Fashion Schools in the World Survey and number one in Australia according to the QS World Rankings for 2020. RMIT prepares and inspires our students to succeed in a rapidly changing global fashion and textile sector. During your student journey, you will be exposed to the industry through many different channels to allow you to work on briefs, projects, folios, and campaigns. You will also have the chance to take part in global experience opportunities with our partner institutes around the world. This can come in the form of an exchange program or as a summer holiday experience. I myself was given the opportunity to go to Vietnam on a tour over the break with my lecturers to visit manufacturers and fabric markets. The year after was Japan, so it's all up to luck for which country during your time at RMIT. Fast facts. All right, so clothes are central to our lives. Um, we wear them every day. They define us, they keep us warm and mirror our way of life. Yet our consumption of clothes has increased to new and dangerous levels. According to the UN, the fashion industry is the second highest a user of water worldwide. The average consumer is now purchasing 60% more items of clothing compared to the year 2000, but each garment is kept half as long. On average, 40% of clothes in our wardrobes are never worn, while 85% of textiles are either landfilled or incinerated, and very little is reused or recycled. The fashion industry is valued at $2.5 trillion and employs over 75 million people worldwide, a true engine for economic development, but at the same time is the second largest polluting industry after oil. These reasons are why at RMIT, our fashion and textile offerings are underpinned by the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. Please do have a look at these goals online. There are 17 key ones and include gender equality, climate actions, and so forth. Fashion industry disruptors. For those wanting to enter the course, my word of advice, please do read up on the following as they will be fantastic to incorporate into your interviews if they align with your goals. Sustainability. A business as usual approach to production and consumption is recognized as a threat to the industry and to the world. As a result, all RMIT fashion and textile offerings are underpinned by the UN Sustainable Development Goals. 
Asia. Locations traditionally recognised for fashion design, manufacturing and consumerism have shifted. For the first time in 2018, more than half of clothing and footwear sales originated outside of Europe and the US. Asia is emerging as a highly influential region for design, technology and enterprise, while Indochina is forecast to grow at an exponential rate in terms of consumption and production. Digital and communication. Employment opportunities require increased digital literacy and communication, which has resulted in the rise of digital workers and digital makers. Automation. The rise of automation, robotics and AI are already impacting ways of working and production methods in the fashion industry. Data. Companies now have access to unprecedented amounts of uh, personal data and information. Data analytics and the use of data connected to wearables require thoughtful approaches that are ethical and user centered. Ethics. This just popped up. Okay. Ethics. Legislative and policy frameworks are required for the global fashion industry to ensure a sustainable and ethical future. So what is design? It is about the body and materials, exploring surfaces, materiality, products, spaces, and experiences. We seek to imagine future commercial contexts, create ethical design propositions, and use cross-disciplinary collaboration to drive global and competitive practices. Cross-disciplinary collaboration can be quite diverse. The traditional collaborations could be with textile artists, stylists, embroiderers, photographers, both within RMIT as well as external. It can also be engineers, electricians and so forth. Technology is about environments and materials, creating innovative, sustainable solutions, product and systems, responding to critical challenges and emerging opportunities in the fashion and textile industry. We focus on ethical and sustainable production practices, digital technologies, material innovations and wearables using interdisciplinary and user-centered approaches. Enterprise is about people and economy, economies, examining environmental, ethical, corporate and consumer dimensions of the global fashion and textile industry through the specializations of product management, fashion marketing and retail. We emphasize new practices from data-driven approaches to interactive virtual environments, transparency of global value ch chains and improved practices in a sustainable and circular economy. Fashion and textile programs. We have four, fashion design, fashion and textiles, sustainable in environment, textiles design, and fashion enterprise. Fashion design is full-time three years. In this practical and creative degree, you'll be exposed to different areas of design and design methods. You'll refine your practice and you'll learn to apply your skills to garments, communication material, artifacts, and more. RMIT students and graduates receive national design awards scholarships and invitations to participate in national and international showcases, events and exhibitions, including some you've heard of, Virgin Australia Melbourne Fashion Festival, VAMP, National Graduate Showcase, Melbourne Fashion Week, the Student Collections Runway, Graduate Fashion Week London International Catwalk, ID, Emerging Designer Award, Design Institute of Australia, um, so there are some. Next is textiles design. It's full time three years as well. Textile designers work across multiple contexts and collaborate with other disciplines such as fashion, interior, architecture, industrial, automotive industries, as well as developing emerging custom and niche independent design practices. Some recent industry partners can include um, State Library Victoria, Sports Girl, Designed to print, Linen House, Maxwell and Williams, so forth. Fashion textiles, sustainable innovation. Um, this is also full time three years. In this course, we focus on a number of areas where you can specialize in 
digital design, materials, wearables, sustainability, ethics, inter interdisciplinary and user centered approaches. So digital design um, to list a few can be 3D prototyping um, and fashion AI. Material wearables. Um, material innovation, smart textiles, biomaterials, and biodesign. Sustainability, um, ethics could be ethics of AI, automation, IP, and innovation. And user-centered approach it would be hands-on, playful prototyping, solution seeking, and speculating on future states. Fashion enterprise is full-time three years offered in Melbourne and Vietnam. Courses focus on entrepreneurial thinking, sustainable fashion, ethical supply chains, trend forecasting, and strategies to build a global fashion brand. Learning about e-commerce, trend and data analytics, quality management, sourcing and logistics, and business and retail store management, including luxury fashion. Become a global professional and learn to lead the future of fashion. And you can specialize in fashion product management, and fashion retail management and fashion marketing. So, here are a series of imagery from RMIT students' works um, on the Melbourne Fashion uh, Spring Fashion Week runway in 2018. Award winning graduates recognised for driving the industry. The winners of the Australian Fashion Foundation Scholarship receive a $20,000 grant and a six month internship with a global fashion powerhouse in New York City or Europe. Since it began in 2009, RMIT fashion graduates have won it seven times. There was only one year where an RMIT student didn't win it, so they really do set you up for success. This is a prototype um, from an RMIT and Nike collaboration. So industry connected. The School of Fashion and Textiles has strong links with industry and the community both locally and internationally. We work with large companies and SMEs across the fashion and textile sector and related disciplines, as well as community groups, government agencies, peak bodies and associations, business networks and other educational institutions. And you may have the opportunity to work with brands like State Library of Victoria, Melbourne Olympic Parks, Acme, Diesel, Dior and Country Road. Your lecturers are the only people setting assignments. Industry partners frequently give briefs to RMIT students. These are not compulsory um, to work on if a particular brand is not in line with your own practice. In saying that, uh, there are often limited spaces, which means it can be sometimes quite competitive to be selected to collaborate. However, I think you should always go for them and you'll be responding to real challenges for real companies. So here's an example, um, 10 groups of our honours students from the RMIT Bachelor of Design, um, Fashion Design course are reimagining an entire uniform collection for the Melbourne and Olympic Parks precinct. 1,000 strong workforce, including operations staff, ushers, security and management. The winners will be announced in August with the top design then re refined in time to have staff kitted out for the 2020 Australian Open. The students are teaming with Melbourne's award winning uniform designer and supplier cargo crew, which is giving students the invaluable real world experience as they embark on their careers. Flexibility of learning. Our program allows for students to customize a unique um, fashion and textile qualification, personalizing their education journey to meet their own ambitions. So what does this kind of look like? You could do a design degree with a minor in enterprise or more in depth. You will be customizing your journey via selection of subjects. So breath subjects offered are traditional supporting subjects such as embroidery, tailoring, sustainable fashion over pattern making, drawing. However, you can also select from outside of the fashion course. For example, for my second year, I selected knitting as well as business. Um, as someone with um, who still didn't know what I wanted to specialize in, 
um, I wanted to broaden my skill sets. Each semester, you will be um, take you will take a core block subject known as Studio. However, you will be able to elect which lecturer you would like to learn from. A bio of each lecturer is provided, um, noting their strengths. A key difference may be, do you pick a lecturer whose strength is draping on a mannequin or straight pattern making? So you get to choose. Hands on practical design skills. So how do we do it? RMIT transforms students into professional art and design practitioners with technical skills. Teachers are practitioners in their field with their own commercial and community practices. And RMIT attracts the best in the industry to interact with us. You will have the opportunity to use different platforms, mediums, equipment and resources related to your specialized course. You will not only be learning about techniques from the past, but you will be learning about the techniques of the future. As the world and education becomes more digital, you will be able to express your work with digital based technology. So in this slide, this photo is the master's studio space in the city campus. You will be at Brunswick campus for the first two years um, and for the final year at the city um, for the Bachelor of Fashion course. The spaces are all new, beautifully designed um, for match maximum natural light and facilities are really top notch. Um, friends who have gone to overseas um, like Paris to study for their, uh, for their one year or semester um, have said that nothing can compare to what we have here. So we are really quite lucky. This image is of our studio room in Brunswick, mannequin galore. So let's talk about the Brunswick Digital, uh, so the Brunswick Design District. RMIT's Brunswick Design Campus, Moreland City Council and Creative Victoria have led a campaign to establish the Brunswick Design District. Brunswick as a long-standing hub for creativity in Melbourne, already has a thriving designer maker community and the establishment of this precinct aims to encourage and make it easier for startups and other enterprise businesses to set up in the area. Under this agreement, the council will be able to limit overdevelopment of housing and allow startups and other small businesses to flourish in former industrial areas. The School of Fashion and Textiles has strong relationships with a number of design studios, makers and creative spaces in the Brunswick area, including Otto and Spike, Denim Smith, Space Tank, Siteworks, Cargo Crew, and so forth. RMIT provides a dynamic learning environment. Our interactive learning spaces are equipped with video and audio channeling. You'll have access to studios and workshops with state-of-the-art specialized equipment like digital embroidery machines, vacuum formers, laser cutters, 3D printers, digital printers, um, knitting machines, industrial weavers, footwear making equipment, specialized design and making software, so much, so more. Exhibition. As a fashion and textile student, you may have a final assessment that will involve an exhibition to showcase your profiles, products, briefs and final projects. Industry regularly attend our student exhibitions, which provides a great chance to network and open the door for job offers. Pathways. RMIT School of Fashion and Textiles offer strong pathways from our vocational certificates and diplomas into our bachelor degrees. Selection tasks. So to get into the course, this is the most important bit, the following will be what's involved. Let's expand. Pre-selection kit. Pre-selection kits are generally online and will ask you to respond to a few questions and may ask you to submit an example of your work or complete a creative task. Back many, many years ago, um, for my selection task, we went to a big lecture hall, were given random items and told to design something using it as inspiration. The pre-selection kits change every year. Your folio. 
Don't include everything you've ever done in your folio. Be selective and choose key pieces that you think demonstrate your creativity and ability. You can select both conceptual and finished pieces. My folio was my VCE art folio, so nothing to do with fashion is fine. Folio presentation. Thinking back, um, this looked like everyone being allocated a spot to display their folio. We all left the room and lecturers wandered through and inspected, admired and decided who will go to the final stage. You should be able to talk about the work in your folio and why you have selected it. Interview. Similar to a folio presentation, this is a chance for the RMIT staff to get to know you and why you're interested in art and design. To prepare for an interview, familiarise yourself with the profession and the career. This means designers' practices. They'll probably ask you for your favourite um, designer or someone that inspires you um, or that you want to be like or work under. If you are going to give a common answer like McQueen, please do have a thorough explanation as to why. Have opinions and ideas about art and design. Know what you like or don't like and why. Um, really speak yourself up and share why you are passionate about the industry and the course. Entry requirements. The following programs have a minimum ATAR and prerequisites for entry. The Associate Degree in Fashion and Textile Merchandising, Bachelor of Fashion Enterprise, Bachelor of Fashion and Textile Sustainable Innovation. Please refer to program pages after the session for information on these prerequisites. The following programs require the ATAR, selection tasks and prerequisites for entry. The associate degree in fashion design and technology, bachelor of fashion design, bachelor of textiles design. The following programs require selection tasks for entry and no minimum academic requirements. Diploma of fashion styling, diploma of visual merchandising. The following programs have no minimum requirements required for entry. Certificate, these are the certificates, including textile production, custom made footwear, textile design, development and production. Yep, so uh, if you do have any questions, please note them down and I'll be happy to answer anything you have to ask um, about the program, about enter into program, the interview and so forth. Um, Perfect. Thanks so much for that, Elizabeth. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, re yeah, really well presented. I'm just going to ask a few questions we've already got prepared before jumping into quite a few of the questions that the um, audience has put in now. So um, to kick it off, um, why did you choose RMIT? Okay, so RMIT. Well, RMIT, everyone knows, is the best university for fashion within Australia. Um, that's what the career counsellors and opinion leaders within the industry agree with. Uh, RMIT is synonymous with prestige and success in the fashion world. So any future employer will know about the RMIT fashion course and um, this will be key to securing jobs. But aside from that, I did attend the RMIT open day and uh, the turning point was viewing the student work and in particular, the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show, which is an exclusive opportunity given to RMIT University to create garments from flora and fauna to, to, be, to be displayed at Mifkus. So this was one of my goals once I saw it, and then um, I went and did it in I think the second or third year, and I came second and you win um, $1,000. So yeah, it was great experience, also press and industry exposure. So, yeah. Yeah, perfect. And um, if you could go back to um, when you were applying to university, uh, what's one thing you would tell yourself or more than one thing? <laughs> I would um, recommend really researching the course program more um, and the supplementary courses that you can take alongside it. So I took marketing as an extra subject, um, which I really enjoyed. So really planning your career pathway would be my recommendation for myself if I could go back and do it again. <laughs> Yeah, cool. And then a bit of a big question here. What's next for you in your career? 
Uh, it's hard. So I don't, really don't know during this current climate. Um, but what's next for me is that I would love to continue to grow within the industry. Who doesn't? After working for Maya Melbourne as a stylist, um, I now started at an export company as a purchasing logistics specialist. Um, so this is liaising with overseas customers and managing the product supply chain. Um, but yeah, I also freelance photography, uh, do freelance photography on the side and shoot runways internationally. So um, yeah, more of that. Yeah, sounds awesome. Um, I'm going to pass it on over to Paris um, now for a quick question. Um, we have quite a few, we've had quite a few questions surrounding entry requirements and um, if you wouldn't mind touching on um, entry requirements, including selection tasks and portfolio um, requirements as well. Yep, of course. So obviously with more um, courses on the more creative side, um, such as fashion, um, you might be required to, instead of having an ATAR, um, have those um, selection requirements. So it is um, sort of different from program to program. It is really important to um, sort of know um, what the options are and what um, you need to do to be prepared to submit um, those selection tasks. So definitely I would recommend um, heading over onto our website and if um, you scroll after um, selecting on the course you're interested in, um, you scroll down to the very bottom and it's um, I think under additional requirements for entry and you'll be able to see um, all the selection task requirements um, and everything that you need for that specific course there um, so that you're all prepared um, and ready to go for submitting to VTAC. Awesome, thanks for that Paris. Um, Elizabeth, this one's for you. Um, someone's asked where the fashion programs are based and if you could talk a little bit about your experience at the campus there. Okay, so I can only speak for um, the Bachelor of Fashion Design Honours program, um, but we did um, the bulk of the, uh, the course at the Brunswick campus and for final year, always the last year, you return back to the city campus. And the reason for this is um, to be able to uh, participate in um, like Melbourne Fashion Week and the competitions, you have to be studying in the city of Melbourne, from my understanding. Um, and the facilities are amazing. Um, you have everything you could possibly need to um, explore um, and it's set of the art, it's the best equipment. And you have technicians there who will teach you um, how to use all the equipment. Perfect. And um, are these kind of courses, the ones in fashion, as suitable if you have no prior experience? Yeah, so like me, I had um, nothing, no prior knowledge of fashion. In first year, they teach you all the foundations of sewing, um, pattern making, like you have, you don't need any uh, knowledge. Um, I would recommend maybe in your free time reading about it. So you kind of, you don't start from zero because I did struggle through first year because it was so much to absorb, but I mean, I survived it. And yeah, I think it's um, not a requirement. Yeah, of course. And um, I, in terms of the campuses, are you able to use the campus facilities and um, equipment after hours? Has been a common uh, question. So um, when you mean after hours, we don't really work on a um, a typical schedule like many of the other courses. Often campuses are open till 9 p.m. Um, you can basically live there <laughs> um, during exam times and you get closer to um, certain key deliverables. They will open up till like very quite late. Um, in the masters, I think that's 24 hour access. Um, so yeah. Yeah, of course. And um, in terms of um, your study load and your hours um, per week at university, what was that like? Uh, sorry, I'll actually touch back on the equipment. Um, it's not available on the weekend, um, but it's available when you don't have classes. So if you have your classes on Tuesday per se, um, you can come in any other day of the week. There's no like regulations that you can only work when you have class. Mm. And so what was your question? Um, it was just, a, could you give a general um, idea of how many hours per week would you be working and then how many um, hours in terms of studying per week and how that would all work in university? Mm. This is a tricky one because fashion really is, it's an art subject. So it's um, however many hours you want to dedicate to it. Of course, the more hours you put in may not necessarily mean you get a better result, but um, the more research and more time you can dedicate to it, it really does show because it's a, it's a time consuming course. So you'll be making and 
um, each, you would treat it like a normal subject. So however many hours of subject time that you have during class, you would multiply that by however many to dedicate to studying and making will be the priority. And you will cool. kind of get a sense because um, at, in the first couple of years, uh, they'll give you timelines um, and uh, they'll set like basic um, tasks, which would be like make a four goal skirt and they'll teach you how to pattern make it in class and then give you a timeline for you to produce it and check in with the teacher as you go. Yeah, of course. Um, I was going to ask, is it someone's asked in the chat here, is it competitive um, when you come to graduate and find a job? And if so, um, what would be some of your advice that um, if you're not a competitive person or you're not used to those kind of environments? Yep, um, I would say uh, all jobs are competitive, no matter what field you're in. Um, you have to really love what you do. But at the same time, I would say uh, start interning early on. So even first year, I was calling up local designers and asking if I could go maybe once a week after work, um, after uni, to uh, shadow them and help them out. Um, and I find that really sets you up for success because it gives you a taste of what's in the real world and they are more than happy um, to take on interns. Um, and yeah, it's if, if you're not a competitive person, I wouldn't say I'm competitive, I, <laughs> but um, it's more like setting time to set yourself up for success. So reach out to your lecturers. Um, lecturers are more than happy to um, offer you their network. Um, they'll recommend you uh, positions. Um, for example, I did a um, one of my lecturers. There was a job up on offer. It was a social media for a textile company and um, sure you may not be uh, so knowledgeable about social media or that might not be your end goal but um, I went ahead and did it anyway because it was um, gave insight to the textile part of it which you are surrounded by every time you go there so um, do read your emails do check in with your lecturers they'll give you opportunities that then you can go and apply to so there'll be heaps of chances to um, get something that suits you in the career aspect yeah, of course um, and what are some examples of pathways or jobs that can come from um, all of these kind of courses? Yep, so the traditional might be um, you do fashion design, you become a design assistant and then you become a designer. So you work through a fashion house in that form. Other way um, it can be, um, like I said earlier, you can work for, for social media um, for, for fashion companies. You can do their marketing department. You can also become a buyer down the line. So you would start as an allocator, which is more the computer um, numbers part of it. And once you learn that, you move to a assistant buyer, and then a um, junior assistant and then senior and then you become a buyer. Um, so that's more traditional in like a department store. Mine, David Jones, I believe, operate in that way. Um, another pathway could be you could be a textile artist um, you could go into um, like sample making pattern making if that's your strength um, that's where you do tech sketches tech packs and you send it off to overseas to get their samples produced and they send it back and you quality control it um, there's some traditional ones you could work for um, a company that's um, like wgsn worth global worth style network um, and that's like trend forecasting and reporting. Um, yeah, there's heaps. You can, yeah, that's some. Yeah, We've got awesome. It <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll pass on to Paris now. Um, we've just got a question about um, if you want to apply for more than one fashion course and how you go about that. Yeah, um, sort of treat it as um, your preferences as a wish list. Um, I'd recommend to sort of put your favourites at the top and then try across um, your selection tasks that you might be required from other courses that you're interested in. Try to sort of um, mould those and make them sort of transferable so that you're not doing a whole heap of extra work and getting stressed leading up to preferences because obviously that's not 
what we want. Um, so yeah, just try and sort of span your work across um, the different areas. And I'm sure being creative, um, that won't be too tricky, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's what I would um, recommend, but definitely check the requirements online for those selection tasks um, so that you know that they are um, transferring properly and stuff and you're not missing out on any courses. Perfect. And back to you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. um, Someone's, uh, someone's asked, what's the time frame like um, between each design assignment or fashion mm. assignment? Your fashion assignments uh, really vary. They're not always uh, like um, make something. <laughs> it could be uh, like an, um, thinking back, take me back to when I was studying. It could be writing an essay. It could be research based. It could be folio based um, uh, or draft based um, assignments are spread out realistically. I think they're all achievable. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's all being calculated by the lecturers to be um, to be set at a, a time that doesn't interfere with another subject, for example. So they're quite understanding about timelines. Perfect. And then going on uh, quite a similar path from that, um, what are exams or assessment tasks um, like for fashion courses, uh, you pretty much touched on there, but if you just want to expand a little bit more. Yep, um, so the main one will be um, creating a collection. So for first year, this might be, um, I think it's it's making one item of clothing, um, whether it be tops or bottoms. I think it was bottoms, you either got to make a pant or a skirt, and the uh, creative direction was completely up to you. We were just allocated a fabric, so we all, that was the kind of, standard set we all use the same fabric in different colors were offered um, and the pattern was completely up to the students so that was really showing your pattern making skills which you'll learn through first year um, and your design skills um, so that's first year second year um, i believe you enter into tailoring they teach you the foundation of making a tailored jacket um, and this is then um, marked at the end on a photo shoot that you would do for this garment and um, the make of it. Similar idea. And as you progress through the years, um, the number of garments just increases. So it's the same principle. It's always based on a photo shoot um, and the final products. You go in front of a panel of judges and they will look at your photographs as well as the actual garments and inspect it and um, give you their feedback. Yeah, cool. And um do you feel, Elizabeth, that your course has been helpful in gaining your um, current role? Absolutely. Like, I think especially first year, they give you all the foundations of um, all the terminology, um, the knowledge that you need to be successful in the industry. And I think RMIT, this course especially, is set up in a way that it gives you um, the skills that you actually then apply in the real like life workforce. For example, you do a subject um, on tech sketches, tech packs, and they're basically um, a digital uh, drawing of your garments. And this is what most of the manufacturers would base their sample making off of. So when I first, um, when I started my first design role, um, all I did was do tech sketches, and this was then sent to the sampler, which was in Melbourne, and then we got back the um, the final product sample and then we would go through and look at the measurements and um, compare and quality control from there. Yeah. Perfect. And then another good question that's come up is, does RMIT um, help you connect with local designers or design work um, within the course? Um, this is a, um, this question is a good one. Um, when you say, do they connect you? I think um, a lot of the graduates do become designers. Um, so they're often bringing in designers around town to come and talk to you guys. We get a lot of guest lecturers who um, talk about their own practice. And then of course, then afterwards you can go and suss them out and ask them for an internship, <laughs> which a lot of people do. Um, you also, um, I think you should be, if you're into design, you should be quite aware of what the trending designers are within Melbourne um, and attend things like Fashion Week if you can. And if you can't, read up on them, look at photos online. There's a lot of resources. So familiarise yourself with um, who's who in the fashion world 
at least Melbourne, Victoria locally, and Sydney. Sydney's quite important. Awesome. Um, I'll send it back to Paris now. We've just had a question that um, for Lila's completed two years of a Bachelor of Design course, uh, and she's wondering if um, units would be transferable. So if you could just go a bit, um, run through credit transfer and how it works at RMIT. Yeah, um, obviously it's going to be a really different case by case. Um, with credits, um, it just depends if um, the course that you're wanting to go into is sort of similar to um, the one that you've previously been studying. So you might find that um, some of your units cross over, some of your um, subjects cross over between um, the, the course that you're wanting to go into. Um, it is just down to the personal circumstance um, and the course you're doing. If you are coming um, or going to a different institution, again, that might be different. Um, it just really depends um, on how the subjects line up, how similar they are, um, and whether we'll be able to give you the credit for it. Um, but definitely, if you are in this position, I would um, highly recommend you um, get in contact with RMIT Connect, um, and they'll be able to help you out with that um, so that it's sort of an easy, seamless process for you. Perfect. Um, and you touched a little bit this on before, uh, about this before, Elizabeth, but um, Someone just said that uh, doing studio art um, similar to yourself and visual mm -hmm. communication, but not um, VCE fashion or a uh, Tate fashion course. Um, you can still apply for the fashion course at RMIT, can't you? Yeah, of course, absolutely. And I think um, actually having a uh, art folio um, has its own advantages. Um, you get to display a lot of um, interesting techniques that then you can then apply to fashion in a new imagined way. So. Um, Make sure in your folio you do include kind of a variety of um, materials or uh, experiments, not just have maybe a whole folio and drawing, um, maybe have some mixed media, um, some research. Uh, it shows that you're um, referencing things, which is quite a good um, thing to have. Um, uh, I also I read a question about preparation. So I did actually, I was really stressed as well about the folio, making sure that um, that would get me in. I did do a short course on RMIT, offers quite a few like little, like a uh, couple week courses um, on, on their folio. Um, and they just kind of, we did a few different examples of like sketching for fashion. And then um, I included those in my folio as well. So. Awesome. Then back to you, Paris. Um, a common question that's been asked is about international students and if um, they are available to apply for these courses and how they can see this information on courses. Definitely. So um, we do have all our information for international applications um, on our RMIT website. So when you are um, on our website, if you head on to our um, study with us tab and you'll be able to see all the areas. And then if you click um, the area that you're interested in, um, you'll be able to see the local students and the international students um, toggle and you'll be able to select that one and it'll show um, all available courses for international students. Um, and this application process just might look a little bit different. Um, so definitely head to our website for all information on that um, so that you're all prepared for um, time to apply. Perfect. And then back to you now, Elizabeth. Um, we've had a few questions about fashion enterprise. So if you could give a um, rundown on um, that a little bit, if you could. I do apologise, I don't have too much knowledge about fashion enterprise as a subject because I didn't take it. However, I do believe it's more based around the, um, the business side of things. So if you're looking at more entrepreneurial um, business aspects rather than the design side, that would be something of course for you. I'm sure RMIT has quite a lot of material online that you can read more in depth about it. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, if you go online and um, search fashion enterprise, all the information will be up there, um, guys. So feel free, free to um, Bachelor of Fashion and um, with Enterprise and you'll be able to find all the information you need. And going on a little bit from there, um, Elizabeth, can you major or sort of in certain areas of clothing that you might be interested in as part of your course? Of course, um, design after I think second year is quite free. You can really do whatever your heart desires. If you want to do tailoring, um, there's lecturers for tailoring that um, you will then select um, and then go down that pathway. Um, I wanted a bit of everything, so I kind of jumped around. I did a studio. So studio is your core 
subject or fashion and you have it every semester but you can choose different lecturers um, for it which then determines your pathway for example i wanted to try knitting um, and RMIT has this amazing in Brunswick um, facility or knitting machines. Um, and um, Esther is the tech lecturer there and she taught you everything from from the scratch. So you didn't have to know any previous knowledge. And um, so I did knitting for a semester and then another semester I did. Um, I selected the Melbourne fashion. Um, the International Melbourne Flower and Garden Show, which was creating garments out of flowers so really nothing to do with technical aspect it was more creative if you're into that side it's more arts um, and final product so that was working with the team to kind of um, we each did our own design and um, was using really unique materials to create a final piece so yeah uh, beautiful um i was gonna ask we're gonna wrap up the chat now thanks so much everyone for all of your questions but one final question elizabeth What's your favourite piece that you've worked on while at university? Oh, <laughs> it's tricky. I think um, a piece that I remember fondly is was because I, I entered RMIT with the expectation that I would um, that I would do the flower and garden show, and then I did it, and then I won a prize. So that was kind of a nice. Um, start to end. Um, a lot of my friends say that their goal was to show at Fashion Week. Um, and then they did in your final year. It's uh, quite competitive then to get into Fashion Week and show in front of all those people. Um, but they were selected and then they would showcase and that is like the closing of their chapter. And then they would then go from that to because that gets um, like international exposure. They would use that in their resume to work for international companies so forth. Perfect. Thanks so much for that, Elizabeth. Um, sure. Thanks for everything. I'll pass on now to Paris. Um, we'll wrap up the session. Amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you. A big, big thank you to you um, for coming and speaking to us about your fashion experience tonight. Um, but if we just go on to the next slide for me, Elizabeth. Um, will be able to see our open day um, information. So we will be having a virtual open day um, this year on Saturday and Sunday, the 8th and 9th of August. Um, so if you um, have any more questions um, that you would like answered, um, we'll have um, a lot of academics and also students available throughout the day and you can come chat um, to us and it'll be a really fun two days. Um, but if we just go to the next slide, um, if you guys do want any more information um, from us, we have a couple more Discover What's Next sessions before the end of July. Um, so definitely jump online and have a look at those. Um, obviously come visit us at Open Day if you have any more questions, um, but contact the study at RMIT team if you have any really specific um, questions at the link just on the screen there. But otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Again, thank you, Elizabeth, for coming along and presenting. Um, and everyone have a good night and good luck with your 12.